viewers. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Dr. Inobia Agatha Kizoba. I am here to make mathematics as exciting as it will be. Mathematics is one of the courses that you hardly graduate in any course without doing or touching a bit of it. It is my aim to make mathematics so friendly to the viewers so that it's relevant to your course of study even when you're not studying mathematics as a, 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 as a single honor. Irrelevance to your course of study will be appreciated and uh, it will now serve its purpose. Over the years, we'll find out people coming into the universities to study one course or the other. And once they were told that they, they will have mathematics course to a bit or to minute or to, to study, we find out that they are already afraid. We want to remove that phobia. We want to remove that phobia and tell you that you can do it. You can really do it because it is really interesting. Mathematics is interesting. That is why I have come. I want to tell you that mathematics is interesting. And I want you to follow me. I want you to join me and see the interesting thing about mathematics so that we can move on. We can appreciate it and we can use it effectively in our various uh, careers. We have to start with prayers. We pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Lord, the author of knowledge, we call on thee to be with us. See us through and take all glory in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll start immediately by looking at the number system. Natural numbers, integers, rational numbers, irrational numbers, real numbers, and complex numbers. Now, this number system, it develops as you develop, as we develop. Okay? Remember when you were in nursery school? That's when you go to school and uh, you, you don't know what, is math what mathematics is all about, but you sing songs like one, two, buckle my shoe, three, four, knock at the door, five, six, and so on and so forth. What are you doing then? You don't know what you are doing. All you know is that you are dancing and you are happy. But I want to tell you that you are into mathematics, unknowing to you, in a way that you will like it, in a way that you will appreciate it. You continued like that. At the point, the teacher will come in with a, 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 pen, a, a pencil or even a ball, and we we'll call it one ball, two balls, and so on. What is he trying to say? He's now trying to tell you that one, two is not just buckle my shoe, but one, two, it can be used in counting natural objects. And that is how we started. You come on to a uh, primary school. Remember the stage you were going to school with counter. You go to school with counter. What you used to do? You use it to count. Count, and you, you count your one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on and so forth. At that stage, you are at the stage of the natural number. The stage of the natural number is denoted by this N. That natural numbers, they are numbers that are used for counting natural objects. At that stage of natural numbers, well, the, what the much you know about numbers is that they are used in counting natural objects. Even numbers like zero means nothing to you. At times, that zero, when you see it, you cry because it means failure. Then, okay? Now, observe that at that stage, three minus two, you can count, you can bring out three counters and minus two counters from it, and you give your answer to be one, the remaining one. Good. But at that stage, three minus five, the answer is, auntie, it cannot. I will clap for you because it cannot. So there's no way you can bring three counters and subtract uh, five, we remove five counters from it. So it cannot. Very good. And we clap for you. Why? Because of the stage. Because of where you are. Because you are still operating at that stage of natural numbers. But as time goes on, remember when the teacher will now come into the class and begin to introduce the concept of OE. That when you're OE, it is what? is negative. 
is negative. Where, where you are not all you need, it is zero. <coughs> then you begin to appreciate the, 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 the number zero. You begin to appreciate the number zero. The number zero is even greater than some numbers. Okay? The number zero is greater than some number because at that stage, the zero means that you are not owing. Okay? Okay. Now, at that stage now, the teacher is taking you to what? To the stage of uh, integers. Integers. They are the whole numbers. They are the whole numbers. So we have the negative integer, zero, we have the positive uh, integers. So we, for this one now, we have the, as the counting number, we have one, two, three, one, two, three. The dot is three, meaning that it's continuous. Here now, we have to start from negative uh, whole numbers. Let's start from anywhere here, say minus uh, uh, two, minus one, zero, one, two. Continue. Good. That's the stage of whole numbers. The whole numbers are numbers whose denominator is equal to one. Okay? Now, remember, I don't know if it happened to you. A teacher coming to a class with a an orange and a knife. An orange and a knife. I witnessed that one. The orange and a knife. The teacher will show you that orange. It is one. And then we cut it with a knife, cut it into two equal parts, and we tell you that it is one over two. That one is divided into two. One over two. Okay? It is called half. And we started like that. What is it trying to do? It's trying to take you to the next stage. That is the fraction. The concept of fraction. Okay? And that is what it's trying to do then. It's trying to take you to the stage of rational numbers, which also include the fraction. And so we can we can now say that rational numbers are numbers that can be written as quotient of two integers. P over Q such that Q is not equal to zero. That is, the denominator should not be equal to zero. Because if the denominator becomes zero, what happens? If the denominator becomes zero, what happens? It's just like someone that you that, that is standing but has no, that, that someone that's supposed to stand but has no ground to stand on. What do you think that will happen to such person? Hmm? Continue to fall. Okay, so that is why we say that the denominator must not be equal to zero. So, you have rational numbers as numbers <coughs> of this form. X equal to P over Q. That is quotient of two integers. P and the Q are integers. And uh, P, Q, is not equal to zero. Okay? Good. So, we have it. Any number that you can write in this form is what? Is a rational number. Is a rational number. Now, there are numbers that you cannot write as quotient of two integers. There are numbers that cannot be written as quotient of two integers. Such number is what we call the irrational numbers. Example of such number is what? Exponential x. Where x is any number. Where x is uh, your number. It's a natural number. Eh? Your such. Such. Okay? You know what your such? Square root of 2, square root of 3. Eh? Number like 5. 5. 5. I know you've seen pi, you know, you, 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 you've you used it, okay? But remember then, when you are using it, you are asked to take pi as equal to 22 over 7. That does not mean that that is the value of pi. Because if pi is 22 over 7, you will not be asked to take it to be 22 over 7. It's because 22 over 7 is a, is a rational number. But pi is a rational number. So the 22 over 7 is... And is a rational approximation of the irrational number pi. That's why you have it there. It's, it's an irrational number. 
the, the characteristics of this type, this type of number, irrational number, is that if you press it in your calculator, if you punch it with your calculator, you will have the decimal part. If the decimal part we continue without a pattern, it will not terminate. It will continue without a pattern. It will not recall. Remember, if you have a decimal part that recalls or that terminates, you can convert it back to a, 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 a rational number. But this one doesn't do that. That is why it is called irrational. It's complement of a, is the complement of a rational. Complement of rational. Okay. Now we now have another type of number which we call the real numbers. The real numbers. Now, this the real numbers is the union of natural, integer, rational, irrational. That's the union of that. Those numbers in big ones coming together gives us the larger scale, which we call the set of real numbers. Now, how do we represent elements of real? We represent it with a continuous line, which we call the real number line. We call it the real line. Points on this line, points on this line are elements of a real. Observe that here is negative infinity. You have positive infinity here. Let's say you have zero here. Numbers like 1 is here, numbers like 0 0.5 is there, numbers like square root of 2 is there, and so on and so forth. So you have the rational numbers there, rational, irrational, uh, 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 they're all there. Okay? Now, the baba of all now is the set, is the complex number, the set of complex numbers. The set of complex numbers. How is this set like? It is numbers that are written or that are of the form A plus IB. We are, we are A and B are elements of a real. We are A, B are elements of a real so you find out that this complex number is of two parts you have the real part you have the imaginary part okay the real part is this one here a and the imaginary part is the one that has i what is actually this i this i the value of this i is equal to sort of minus one the root of minus one Actually, if you use your calculator to uh, find some of your calculator to find the square root of a negative number, it will tell you syntax error or what type of error and so on and so forth. Because the cal because it, it could not uh, it could not uh, understand what that it is. But we imagine that it exists and gives it a value i that is square root of minus one. With that, we can square root of minus four is equal to square root of minus 1 times 4. So it is equal to what? Square root of minus 1 times square root of uh, 4. So we can now have this as what? Uh, we have it as 2 plus or minus 2i. Plus or minus 2i. Okay? So these are the numbers. The type of numbers we'll be using, you know that numbers, number is the basic uh, ingredient of uh, arithmetic. Numbers, they are the basic ingredient of arithmetic, so we'll be using it, we'll be playing with it uh, in solving problems. Okay, we've seen these uh, numbers now, okay? I've just introduced them to you. There are things here that still seems Strange to you. Eh? I know 
they are strange to you or even if they're not strange to you let me take it that they are strange to you because even if it's not strange to me it's strange to another person i want i will explain them in my next class because some of us don't know what this thing is okay some of us don't know what it means okay the i am the uh, imitation used on set so because of this we are going to leave hang this one here we are going to hang it and in our next class we will talk about set we'll talk about set when we now talk about set we will let her come back to him because they are really set of numbers we come back to him to show you the relationship between these uh, sets of numbers okay so for today we uh, we have to call it uh, a, a day today and I, I want you to subscribe to this channel for a more exciting things in mathematics we are really going to conquer thank you